Hey, when will I be cheap famous? I don't know. Probably never. Especially after having Dad to take a enforced break. I will explain why through this film, which is why the film is significantly longer than usual. So if you've been missing me, you, you're going to have a nice long film to reacquaint ourselves. Uh, hopefully you're watching me in black and white. This is 4F Beauty. I'm not sure if I've already said that or not. It's been so long since I've filmed, I've forgotten how to do my own intro. Great. Fabulous. Today, as well as being a get ready with me and a where the hell have I been, I am doing a product review and tutorial. And I keep getting hair in my mouth. Marvellous. Uh, of this BH Sweet Shop Pistachio palette. So, if you want to find out what this looks like, where I've been, whether I'm going to be back on a regular basis or not, and of course, oh this bloody fan, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friends, as I have said for some considerable time and oft here echoed elsewhere, unless imaginative channels, but they don't have Sammy of the sloth a straw to accompany them. <coughs> grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Uh, you'll have to excuse me if I'm a little bit stumbly. It's been about two weeks-ish since I last filmed. Um, so I'm going to do a kind of a start to finish get ready with me. Um, I'm going to be using BH Pistachio Palette. Which my lovely friend Kay picked up for me when she made an order from BH in America because this did not come to the UK. She grabbed me this one and the red one and I I just want to play with some colour. Um, normally I film very early in the morning, sort of half, half six, seven o'clock I'm usually starting. It's currently just gone two in the afternoon because um, it's taken this long for my painkillers to, well, not so much kick in, but for me to stop feeling quite so queasy. Um, this is still a teaching channel. Um, so I'm going to insert a clip just now where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids, what the workarounds are for both, and I'll see you at the other end of it. Um, basically putting some stuff on my face and talking you through stuff, what's been going on with me in the last two weeks, why there's been no uploads on 4F Beauty for a while and why I am looking particularly tired at the moment. Here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, 
but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Welcome back. One more thing I wanted to mention. I go at a speed that beginners and people like me with chronic pain can keep up with. So please don't complain about the speed that I'm doing my videos at. There's a speed widget, feel free to use it. Now I've been saying that for quite a while and I'm getting fewer complaints about that. I am still getting comments though, when I zoom in to do my eyes, you will notice that I zoom right in to just my eyes. Now this does mean when I'm looking for a brush or the next item of makeup, you occasionally get to see my wonderful Widow's Peak hairline. This is a trade-off so that people who are watching me on a phone screen who would normally need glasses on can still see what I'm doing. 
Now I've been saying this at the start of most of my films, just before I insert that clip you've just watched. But I'm still getting people saying, yes, I'm in too close. When you're looking for things, all I can see is your hair. Yeah, there's a reason for that. So I'm going to start inserting this image to all my films in the hope that seeing it in writing might actually make it sink in. If you don't like the way that I film my films, there's a thousand other channels out there who don't zoom in as tight as me, who do speed things up, who do cut things out. When I started this channel, I wanted to cover the areas that were not being covered. Thank you. Namaste. Moving on. Um, I have this on because, as usual, when I'm wearing a vest top, I do have issues of occasionally falling out of them, and this is not that kind of channel. Right, let's zoom you in. Oh, a little bit. Just to give you an idea. So you can just see, see a, bit, a bit closer when I'm putting bits on my face. I'm actually going to start right from the beginning. I have already um, cleaned my face and I've gone over it with... This is not the Yes to Tomatoes Clear Skin. This is uh, Garnier Micellar Water. But I like this pump bottle so I just fill this up. And I've gone over my skin with Micellar Water. I have moisturised it at the moment. My moisturiser of choice is Olay Whip. It's very light, it gets absorbed very quickly. I have also SPF, even though I'm probably not actually going out anywhere today. And my SPF. I've already buried. I'm currently using this Ren Clear Screen Mineral Mattifying Broad Spectrum SPF 30. I'm really liking this at the moment. Um, I'm liking what it does for my skin. Um, it doesn't break me out which is good because I've got a fair few things of that going on right now um, combination of it's been ridiculously hot here in the UK the past couple of weeks it's one of the reasons I've not been able to film um, even at like half six seven o'clock in the morning it's already 23 degrees and I struggle with the heat. My fibro reacts very badly to it and I go very dizzy. I've already fallen over twice this week alone where I've gone dizzy from the pain and the heat. So, um, this, most people will recognise it as my mole and are thinking, what is going on? Have you had the mill removed? No. Part of the problems I get when it's hot and I get sweaty, I break out in a lot of spots on my chin. Hormonal. Add to that mask wearing. And I had a humdinger of a spot come up through my mole. If you've ever had that, you know how damn painful that is. Right, um, I'm going to be using this Barry M Pixie Skin Blurring Beauty Elixir today. Hello, thank you. This is meant to be their version of the 
the facade blurring thing. And you see these brushes advertised all over the show. It is clean, it's just... It goes shiny on the bottom after you've washed it, which is really weird. Because I've only used this for creams and stuff, so there's no actual pigmentation gone on here, but it just goes really shiny. These are crap for foundation, don't be suckered into it. But they are great for spreading out your skincare. I'm not going to do the um, the ubiquitous, you you know, Instagram. Oh, let's drip it all over my face in a sexual manner. No. Three drops, tips of fingers, rub fingers together, tap forehead, eyelids, cheekbones, jawline, nose and chin and down the neck. Then use this. To spread it out a bit. You can use your hands obviously, but I just quite like how that feels. It's nice and soft. Right. Now the next thing that I do, that you don't normally see me do, is put on my eye primer. So I'm now going to zoom you in to just the eyes. Oi, oi, oi. Hopefully I remember to put a uh, thing on me. Transition, that's the word I'm looking for. Right, I keep two brushes here all the time for doing my eye primer. I have a packing brush and I have a blending brush. And I start off by getting some on the packing brush. Just roughly bunging it on the eye. As you can see, I'm not exactly able to so precise with it. And you can also see how little I've used. I then go with the blending brush and just buff it out. I found with um, these Crown Pebble eye primers, the, 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 least, the less you use, the better the result you get. Which means, of course, it lasts a lot longer. And of course one of the things that I love about this is that it goes on dry, not sticky. So you don't have to have that trade-off between do I set it so I can blend on it or do I um, do I not set it and then risk hell of a job blending. So. I'm going to grab a couple of blending brushes and I'm going to get started. I'm going to start off with this tapered blending brush and I'm going to go into cone or cup which is the deepest matte in the palette. through what is my natural crease. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you follow wherever you've moved it to. And I'm doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending as always. Hold the brush at the ends, so you put as little pressure on as possible. And then we do natural turns towards the nose. 
bit of a fleckle when we get there and the reverse turns to come back out again. And the reason that I do that is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teenagers that have always been slim that have quite mobile lids. I'm just making sure I've got that blended out nicely. I do struggle sometimes here and here with super dry patches, but I'll see how it looks once I've got all the other colours blended on top. I'd much rather build a colour up than have too much to start with, you know. And I always start on the outside of the eye because it's much easier to blend out if you do deposit too much pigment and you haven't got your nose in the way. You can see that built up really quite nicely. So, why have I been off the last couple of weeks? Um, partly the heat. But a lot of it has been pain. Um, I've got osteoarthritis in my spine from the middle of my shoulder blades down to my coccyx. It's also spread into my right hip. Um, and I have fibromyalgia and sciatica and peripheral neuropathy. Um, and a lognia. So, to explain those to you if you've never had them, osteoarthritis, the bones in my spine feel like they're grinding together, like there's no spongy disc in between them. There is still discs in between them, I've not blown a disc or anything. But with the arthritis the disc is wearing away so it's thinner and it's like the difference between sleeping on a thick mattress or sleeping on a ground cover on a rough campsite floor you know you, there's a difference and there's a difference with my spine and it, 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 there are times that it hurts so much I can't even stand upright I can only stand bent over like an 80 year old leaning on furniture or something because it just the pain takes my breath away uh, fibromyalgia is it's a difficult one to describe because it has different symptoms for different people but for me it's Probably the easiest way to describe it would be arthritis of the muscles. Uh, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth and then I'm going to pick up a slightly larger blender to buff some colours out of here. Um, Yes, yeah, it's, it's like arthritis of the muscles. Every muscle in my body hurts. Um, if you've ever had flu or had a really tough like gym workout or whatever, and then the next day you get up and you're like, oh god, my muscles really hurt. Imagine that all over. 24 hours a day, every day, that's what I live with, um, if you're blending two colours together like this try and start off half on the colour that you're blending and half on your natural lid and just find you'll get a 
smoother blend that way with a less obvious delineation of where one colour stops and the next one starts. This is shade Nutty, by the way. Um, yeah, and as, as part of my fibro, I have a Lodnia, which is where all of my skin, all over my body, the nerve endings are confused because I'm living in chronic pain. The nerve endings are confused, so the slightest touch on my skin hurts. Running water on my skin in the shower hurts. Putting clothes on, having the clothes against my skin hurts. I can't wear jeans. I haven't been able to wear jeans for a long time because the, no matter how soft the jeans are, they hurt my skin. Um, there are times even in the winter I'll be wearing like cut off length trousers and people are like, why don't you put longer trousers on? Because it hurts my legs too much to have fabric touching them and people don't understand that. Imagine imagine you've come off your bike as a kid or your skateboard or whatever and you've got gravel rash. Remember how painful that is? I'm going to guilty pleasure next. And then because of this gravel rash You've just been sitting out in the sun for a bit. And you get sunburn on the gravel rash. Can you imagine how much that hurts? Because you know how sunburn hurts. Imagine that on already damaged skin that's got the gravel rash. Okay, with me so far? Great. Now every time something touches your skin, it feels like the consistency of a cheese grater. The lightest possible touch, be it water from the shower, clothing, me trying to wash my, you know, lather up soap to wash myself to rub cream in feels like a cheese grater rubbing across your skin or very very fine sandpaper on top of your sunburnt gravel rash that's what my skin feels like most days, all day. Then I have peripheral neuropathy, which means my hands and feet can go numb. I had to change from driving a manual car or a stick shift to driving an automatic because my left foot kept going numb and I couldn't feel it on clutch. I'm going into soft serve next, which is the final of the four mattes in this palette. So you'll go to get up from a seat. can't feel your feet. You know like when you've sat down for too long and your feet have gone dead and you go to stand up and you can't feel them? Yeah, I'll randomly get that out of nowhere with no warning. 
I'll stand up, take two steps and be fine. Third step, feet have gone numb. Can't feel them. Which means if I haven't got someone or something I can grab hold of, I end up on the floor. This is why I am now too scared to go out on my own. I can just about get to my car, but I've had to buy... Um, it's like a, like a long seatbelt material. It's about half the width of a seatbelt. And it's a long strap with a loop at either end. And I have to use that to put underneath my feet to help lift my legs up into the car because particularly my my right leg with the arthritis in the hip, if I haven't got somebody there to physically lift my leg into the car, and then I can't get into the car. So I've had to buy an adaptive aid to help me get in and out of the car. Um, and for the last few months I've been struggling with cellulitis which has caused uh, lymphedema in my legs. Now despite me being overweight, obese, whatever you want to call it, fat, I never had swollen legs or ankles or feet. Now half of my shoes I can't get into because my feet and ankles are so swollen. Um, And my calves, I've noticed, have ballooned up, which they'd never done before. I used to get compliments on how shapely my legs were. Hey, for a fat bird, you've got quite nice shaped legs, haven't you? Mm, yep, well, they wouldn't say that now. Um, I'm going to pop a picture up on screen just while I clean this brush off. If you're squeamish and you don't like the look of legs and feet or medical um, issues, I'm going to put a picture up of the cellulitis on my legs. So look away now and I'll tell you when it's safe to look back. You can see from that picture just how sore the skin is and how swollen particularly my left leg is. Okay, I'll take the picture down now. Safe to look back again. I'm going to use this flat brush and I've got a makeup obsession fit fix spray. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, always go in with a dry brush, then wet the brush and then apply the pigment. Um, I'm going to start off with Sweet Life. If you've never had cellulitis, it's I've got a high pain tolerance. I've had to have had over the years. This cellulitis is horrific. It's nerve pain. So I can't get away from it, no matter what I do. No painkillers are touching it, not even my morphine that I take for my back. And when it's been hot, 
like it has recently. I'm just going to dry the brush off so I can go back in to do the other eye. My legs swell up more. Which then means, because the cellulitis is damaged skin, lymphedema is where your lymph nodes aren't working properly. And cellulitis, as severe as mine, can cause lymphedema. Um, because of the deep creasing on this eye, I do have to stretch this lid out. Um, I only stretch it out as far as I need to. I don't stretch it out to my ear hole. And once I've got it all blended on, I gently let go. Otherwise what happens is this builds up in the creasing loosely and then starts falling in my eye through the day. But don't do that unless you've already got the issues that I have that I've already mentioned. Yeah, so the, the lymphatic fluid finds a break in the skin, starts running down your leg, which effectively macerates the skin. We're going to treat. And again, wet both sides of the brush. And uh, when that happens, when I have the, the lymphatic drainage coming down the outside of my leg, instead of going back up and being dealt with by the various different organs of the body. I have to have pressure dressings on. Now I've already told you how painful my skin is in terms of just light fabrics touching it. So imagine having to have an absorbent pad, well, zinc infused bandages to try and dry it up, which if you've ever had old school plaster cast, it's similar to that, it's a fabric bandage with the zinc kind of coating both sides of it. So you have that on first, and then you have like a barrier cream that you put around the edge of the good skin to try and stop further damage to it. And then you have an absorbent dressing. Then you have a bandage wound as tightly as possible around the leg, starting from the ankle, working up to the knee. But I'm going to crunch now. And then over the top of that you have a tuber grip, like an elasticated sock thing to help hold all the bandage in place and help keep it clean. So imagine dealing with all that heat that we've had 
with both legs wrapped up, effectively wrapped up in like a duvet. Add to that the pain of the pressure against your skin, which can't bear pain. You know, can't even bear the lightest touch, let alone pressure bandaging. And I think maybe you'll understand why. I've not been able to film for the last couple of weeks. I tried. I really did try. Um, uh, put a pink look up for Chip on Instagram because um, she'd just had her first child, little baby girl. And we all did a pink look and put it up on Instagram to say congratulations. And although I didn't film it, just sitting here, putting that makeup on, I didn't even use foundation, I just did the eyes, a um, bit of highlight, a bit of blush, and some nippy. Just sitting here for the short time it took to do that, because when I'm filming it's, it's a lot quicker because I'm not having to stop and explain things to you. I was in so much pain I passed out. So that was fun. This is the point that I would normally say I'll pause you while I go and put some base makeup on. But I've been asked to show the entire thing, so I'm going to do the entire thing. You may have gone quite a while without seeing me, but you're going to get a good old double dosage now. Oh, actually, let's tidy the eyes up first. But this is just a pad with some micellar water on. I don't like using um, tape. give an edge because if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder from going under the edge of it then it's sticky enough to pull on your skin when you take it off and as you can see a micellar pad can do exactly the same thing. Right let's zoom you out a bit Normally in this weather I don't wear foundation, but there are three that I call my... Actually there's four, because I've got my cosmetic CC cream, but in terms of actual foundations rather than CC cream, I have these three. I have the W7 Genius Featherlight Foundation in shade buff I have my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea in fair neutral and I have my Becca Aqua Luminous in fair now I have not used my Tarte one for quite a while but I cannot find Oh, brush that I use for this one. So I'm going to use my use my It Cosmetics one instead. That came with my CC cream. It's just a flat topped kabuki. I give this a shake. Push the knob down. Unscrew it. Drop some foundation on the brush. Don't 
dab it onto various parts of the face and then just blend it in using circling movements. I used to do my foundation before my, my eyes but since I've been doing more colourful looks when, you know, that, that can have fallout to them, I much prefer doing my eyes first and then doing the foundation afterwards. Now you can see that's super, super light coverage, but it is buildable. Sometimes it's easier just to put some on the areas that you are targeting. So yeah, um, that's that's basically why I've not been around the. Um, The heat combined with the cellulitis pain combined with all my other pain that I live with on a daily basis was just it's too much. So I do apologise that you've um, gone a while without seeing me but I hope that this extra long film Will help make up for that. So, while I've been away, how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't been a good one, then I hope that tomorrow is better. And if you're at the start of your day, then I hope it's going to be a good day for you. I think I might go with this e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer today in shade Fair Beige. Oh, that's... You do not need huge amounts of concealer. But literally three dots and then I'm going to grab this is just a little mini flat topped I always like to bring it up to this little bit here because we all have like a little dark spot just there where your nose dimples in okay no need for huge great triangles in fact in real life, all it will do is make you look super cakey and overdone. I mean, it might look good under your ring light and stuff, but trust me, the minute you step outside, people are going to be like, ooh, cake face. Because you could see I had very, very dark circles today. I've been averaging about three hours sleep a night recently, which is not good. And I'm just going to grab some loose setting powder. Oop.
grab another little flat topped brush and before it creases just set the under eye I like to then go down the side of my nose and push some extra into the nose crease and these bits like As I was saying, I like to pop some into those creases there and across the chin crease And anywhere that I'd, if I'd spot concealed. And then put the dense brush down and get a much more floofy brush. This is, I think this is a BH brush, yeah. BH number two from their Smoke and Mirrors. And then use this to lightly dust. rest of my face. If you get a very very oily nose you might find that um, pushing some of the, using the more dense brush and pushing some, uh, you know, sort of pushing the powder in like this with the more dense brush you may find will help in terms of setting your foundation better and helping it last longer on your nose and then this is a Coastal Scents S48 And this is the Physician's Formula Light Butter Bronzer. It's in its new colours. This is the old, this is the, the old colours. Um, and this is the bronzer rather than the light one. I think they've changed the colour on the light one. Because before, the light one was way, way too orange for me. But now, it's not that bad. She says, with this looking ridiculously orange in the viewfinder today. along the jawline to minimise the chinage and then clamp the brush like this and just do whatever's left on the brush either side of the nose there's lovely I've got this Cover FX Pink Dahlia the um, blush duos that they do with the Matte one side and the shimmer the other. So I'm literally just bouncing between the two. Going in very light handed. It's a very, very pigmented brush. So for those of you who always ask what I'm doing when I'm off camera, this is it. Right, let's 
let's zoom you in and do the browns. I would imagine that I will use transitions and cut a lot of the me zooming you in and out out. Right, this is the pink honey honey glue in strawberry sherbet. Looks like this. So you get your spoolie and you stick it in the middle and you give it a wiggle like that. Now they suggest rec they recommend wetting your brush. I recommend you don't because it goes on a little bit sticky if you use it on a dry brush like I've done here. Which means when I apply powder over the top to add colour, powder has something to stick to and the powder then sets the stickiness of the brow into place. Just wipe the spoolie off on the clean washcloth and then using the other end of the brush this end I'm going to go into cone or cup which is that deepest green that we used here Gently spoolie this, well, not spoolie it, but brush it into the brow. Remember you can always go back in and fluff it out a little bit if you found you've got a couple of bits that have kind of clung together which can happen as you could see got um, coloured pomades but Revolution seem to have stopped doing them. I don't know if they're going to be relaunching them, revamping them or if they're gone forever. But I was having so many people say to me, oh I really want to do coloured brows like you but I can't get the pomades, what can we do? So this is what I've found as the best alternative which is the soap brow method and a powder from the palette that you are currently using or a powder which will complement it Grab a flat topped brush Dip that into cone or cup Run that along the lower lash line I do struggle with putting things in the lower lash line. I've had some success with the BH Power Pencils. 
uh, they actually go on the waterline without irritating and do actually stay there a couple of hours which is quite nice. Uh, the majority of them however don't. <coughs> This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped but chunky. Basically you can use any smudger brush, I just really like this one. And I'm going to go into Guilty Pleasure. I'm going to use that just to buff the lower lash line. And soften. smoke out the look a wee bit like so and then this brush is a cheap brush that I bought off of eBay over a decade ago. It's just a lip brush. It shows you if you look after your brushes, they will look after you. And I'm going to go into the only shade in the palette I've not used yet, which is a dessert. And I'm going to pop that in the inner corner. Bring it around. Tear duct and just blend it in under the eye there. And maybe pop a little bit of it just up under the tail of the brow just to give that a bit of lift oh I like that okay I am going to pause you while I uh, try and put eyeliner in my waterline in case it does decide to bugger about um, I'll put some mascara on some lippy uh, possibly stick some highlight on do something with the hair and I'll be back with my final thoughts on this palette. I am back, my lovelies. Uh, the eyeliner that I'm trying today is from Barry M. And it's one of their high vis strobe lights eyeliner. And obviously, it's the green one. So far, so good. Mascara today is my Catrice Glamondol Volume or Waterproof Mascara, which is a dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Highlight that I decided to add, even though I'd got a glowy blush on, is the Laura Geller Champagne Pink baked highlighter so pretty and the lippy I got one of my hourglass confession lipsticks out in my one desire mm. so this is the look let's go in with a bit of the mint chop chip sleigh all day Love the smell of that. So, now there we go, my beauties. That's the um, the get ready with me full update and trying out this pistachio palette. Now I used every single shade in this palette. I love it. It is stunning. I am gutted this has not come to the UK and I cannot thank Kay enough. 
that when she was placing an order with the American BH that she thought of me and said did I want to add anything to her order. Bless her heart. This is just... I need to wiggle. Hang on. Sorry about that. I normally wiggle every time I pause the camera and of course I didn't do much pausing today and my back is telling me off and yes I cut about six inches off the length of my hair it was hot I wanted to shave the whole lot off and then hubby kind of freaked out so I decided best not but yeah this palette I really love I love the fact that it's half matte half shimmer it's got a good mirror, good sized mirror to it. It's rare that you get palettes that are half and half, half matte, half shimmer. Particularly in colours that are difficult to create in a matte shade. Normally you would find maybe one or two mattes and then the rest would be shimmers because shimmers are so much easier to create. Um, I am really really happy with this the shimmers are very very soft you do not need to go into them very hard with your brush at all there wasn't that much fallout that I noticed the colours built up quickly and easily and they blended together seamlessly um, if you can get your hands on this then I would absolutely say yes do it it's great now obviously I've also got the cherry on top one to try which I will try another day but in terms of the pistachio sweet shop BH cosmetics palette this gets an absolute double thumbs up from me it really does I love this absolutely love it um, so there we go there's a nice long film for all of you uh, to kind of say sorry for having been absent for so long but hopefully um, hopefully you can understand why I I have to listen to my body um, there's, there's times that me in filming it's just it's not gonna happen sad but there you go um, I noticed today that I'd not been getting any emails through about any of the channels that I'm subscribed to when I went back through and checked not only had I been unsubscribed from some channels but every single notification bell that I had rung had been changed from all emails to personalised emails which meant no bloody emails so I had to go through today and I had to go into every single channel that I had the notification bell on for and change it so that it said all notifications if you are finding that you are no longer seeing me either in your news feed or in your inbox please double check not just my channel but everybody else that you subscribe to as well because it seems like YouTube has done an update and just knocked everybody back to not getting emails but it did subscribe Miss James Charles's channel which I've unsubscribed from about 17 times now not that I'm saying there's a conspiracy or anything but allegedly anyway I really hope 
that you have found this helpful. Um, and if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've made it this far through on what is a very long video compared to my normal ones, uh, hi, I, I guess you enjoyed something. Um, it'll be awesome to welcome you to the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit the subscribe button, you ring the notification bell, you choose all notifications, and then hopefully you'll get told when I upload a film. However, I do have an awful lot of other films that you can watch on my channel. I've got Get Ready With Me, so I've got Collabs, I've got Challenges, I've got Tags, I've got uh, Zodiac series that I need to continue with, I've got product reviews, um, tutorials, I've, I even read you my favourite poem. So I'm guessing there's going to be something in at least one of the playlists that you will find enjoyable. In which case, as I have said for some time now, <clears throat> a grab a drink, a grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist, and enjoy. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous. And I, I'm going to get this hair out my mouth, I will see you next time. Bye for now.